everyone, it's Putty Geeks and I'm starting with my first makeup tutorial. As you can see from my bare face, this is my Jinx t-shirt from Hard Times which I'm very proud of, I'm just enjoying that right now. <laughs> um, this week we're going to be focusing on three different ways to do a white face, like white face paint, in three varying shades, so you're thinking like really extreme like Lady Death, you want to look like a piece of paper, slightly opaque, so like har classic Harley Quinn, still quite bright but you know slightly more skin tone, and then a really opaque one that's very skin like, um, very similar to kind of new Harley Quinn where it's supposed to actually look like skin but still be very pale um, so yeah I'm going to be showing you three ways to do those and uh, let's get into it so starting with our strongest method um, which would be used for something like Lazy Death where you needed a really bright white face I'm starting with oil balancing moisturiser by Simple I would recommend using a moisturiser that suits your own skin type whatever that might be um, but that's just my personal favourite for a really greasy oily skin and Simple's really good for skin that's sensitive or people that have a lot of allergies like myself then I'm using MAC Prep and Prime primer um, again that's just a personal favourite you can use any primer but especially if you're using something like face paint and something quite striking I would definitely recommend using a face primer all over your face Okay, so now you want to take your egg sponge, which hopefully isn't as gross and covered in old face paint as mine, um, get it wet and squeeze it out. You want it to just be a bit damp, not soaked. And you also want to take your white makeup. I'm currently using Meron Paradise makeup. It's pretty good, it's stage quality stuff, but I've heard that um, Cryolan um, Aqua Colour is actually better and goes on a lot smoother. You want to take a brush and get that wet and obviously mix it in until you've got like that kind of consistency where you want to have a bit of like wet makeup sitting in the pot. Scrape out what's left on the brush because most of it will get stuck on the brush and you're not going to be using the brush. And then you want to take your egg sponge and like I'm doing dip it in there to get plenty on there. When it comes to applying the makeup you need to be quite fast um, because it sets really quickly and when you go over it you disturb it and it gets like thinner. So you want to be quite quick with how you're moving and you're just patting it on. As I said it will dry quite quickly so you do want to move fast so that's why I'm like not taking time to really show you what I'm doing. Um, and this stuff once it's dry which is when about, within about 5 seconds it's already started to dry. If you go back over it you disturb the makeup and you water it down a bit more. And this can be really hard to like reconnect with where you've stopped because as you can see you get a clear line where I'm showing you now is where that's happened it's really difficult to get this stuff even um, and this is why that tends to be my like least favorite way of doing white makeup because it's just almost impossible to get it perfectly white but that's the method I would use perhaps you'll be a bit better at it or work it out um, but that is overall method one if you want something really really striking Okay, so moving on to method two. This one is for a slightly more opaque look, so we're going to be using your standard Snazzaroo face paint or anything that's kind of standard children's face paint because you want something a bit thinner in consistency and any foundation, but I tend to prefer this stuff. It's just what I've used before. Again, just cheap stuff that's really, really light in color because you don't want to dilute it too much to make it too dark. Um, so we're just going to be combining these two things to give you a slightly more opaque look to your white but still really strong. Okay so again we're taking the same kind of brush, we're going to put get that wet and mix it up in the face paint to get it nice and watery and ready to be mixed. So that's what I'm doing now and getting it all over my fingers. <laughs> And now you want to get some foundation as well, probably about the same amount. I'd say actually a bit less because you're just doing this so that it A lightens it up to be slightly less white and B so that it isn't so um, thin so that you get a bit more coverage. So mixing those two together, which is what I'm doing now because I've just given up on my Snazzaru staying white so I just now put the stuff directly in with the face paint. Again, this is going to dry quite quickly, so you need to move quite fast. It won't dry quite as quick as the stage makeup, which is why we're using like store-bought children's face paint. And if you're having a problem getting that to mix right in colour, you can, as you see here, I've added a bit more foundation in between to actually mix it on my face. Um, it does look more opaque than it does on camera. It was really strange that it came up just as bright white on my screen, um, but it does spread. So you can see I've started spreading it a bit more on my face because you still want a lot of it. 
but you do need to start blending it out otherwise it won't totally stay in place like the Meron did um, but it will be kind of thicker where you applied it so you'll spread it out and you'll have certain parts that are really really translucent and then other parts that are like one blotch of really heavy duty white Okay, so as you can see, because we're still using paint, it can be quite difficult to get this even and to spread it out smoothly, but it is a lot easier than doing it with stage makeup, so it depends the kind of look you're going for, really. So now for my third and final method. This is my personal favourite. Um, I'm using, as you can see, MAC White Face and Body Foundation, which is quite expensive, but you can get a small pot of it like this on eBay for about three quid. And I've also got a sample pot of um, MAC Studio Fix in the lightest colour that they do. Again, if you can't afford to buy this foundation, you can get it in a sample directly from MAC themselves, whereas the white is quite hard. They don't stock it in store, but you can get a sample on eBay for really cheap. So you just want to get as you can see this is really hard to get out of the pot so you want to get a brush ready to pull it out of the pot onto like i'm using like a lid to mix the two colors together it doesn't run so you can't pop, you can't just pour it out you have to get a brush and scoop out what you want whereas the other foundation is a bit more liquidy it will move Okay, so we've got our amount of white on there. Generally, you want quite a bit more white than your actual skin tone um, foundation because obviously you want it to be more white than skin tone. Um, so we've scooped out some of that. Then you want to judge how much of the um, skin tone stuff you want to pour out to mix in together, which is, I assume, what I'm doing now. As I said, this is my favourite method because it's a bit more realistic and skin like and you can build it up to be as strong as you like or as um, opaque as you want it to be and it's a lot easier to mix and overlay than anything to do with actual paint. So you want to mix them together and have a look at the colour until it looks like the kind of colour you want, which is what I've done now. Um, you can then later on, as you add it on, start um, building over it with just white. The reason I would advise that you mix the two is that um, because you can only get MAC foundation in their face and body foundation, it isn't doesn't give very strong coverage, it's very very transparent, so even though it will make you look really white, it won't cover anything and it won't give you an even skin tone. So you can use it directly on your face if you just want to look pale, but if you're trying to build it up to look like foundation and to cover your spots or red patches or anything like that, you will need to then mix it in with foundation to make it a bit more like a bit thicker and a bit more like actually putting a colour over your face rather than just changing the tone of your skin. Okay so I've been mixing in the background, this is the colour I've come up with now that I'm happy with but again it depends on yourself and it's hard to tell until you put it on if you've put enough white which you'll see with me as I start building this up and again you just start applying this with a brush and then just bounce at it with your beauty blender egg sponge whatever you've got um, I tend to as you can just, just see just pretty much just hit myself in the face with it <laughs> and bounce it off my skin again you still need to work quite quickly but this you've got a bit more time than the other two methods but it will as I said in the last in in method two it will leave you with patches that are a bit thicker than the rest of them if you leave it for too long so you still want to kind of like I'm doing apply a little bit spread it out apply a little bit spread it out and keep working that way across your face Fortunately with this you can go over it as many times as you like and you won't get the effect we had with the paint where it starts to um, thin out or show a line of where you've last applied. So you can go over it as many times as you want to, which is the beauty of this method. You can keep going over, you can build it up, you can move it around and it won't show in the end result. Okay, so I'm going back over. As you can see, I've got my very first base thin layer of colour on and I'm just going back over it again with the same mixture we already did. So I've not made it any whiter or changed anything. I'm just trying to, trying to get a bit more coverage with the ori original mixture than we first had. So you're just doing the same thing again, dotting it on and spreading it out anywhere that you feel needs more cover. For me, I'm going to go over my whole face again just to get a bit more of an even consistency before I then start working on the colour. Okay, so if you're happy, you can just stop here um, or you can continue with the other steps to make it paler or to just skip ahead and do the last step that I'll show with the powder to set it or just leave it like this. It's entirely up to you depending how white you want to go and how matte you want to make it. For me, I'm not, not quite happy with this. I look very pale, but I don't look quite as white as I wanted to look. Um, so I've started 
as you can see dabbing on directly with the white foundation now. As I said now that we've got that coverage down with the mixture of the actual foundation we've got our evenness we've made it a bit thicker you can just start adding just the white stuff to increase the um, paleness of the face. Okay, so now it's time to set it and make it a bit less shiny. As you can see, I'm using Stargazer white powder, but any white powder you can get is fine. I used to use a white Stargazer um, eyeshadow, so just anything you can get would be absolutely fine. Um, but the powder really is to just set the colour, add a little bit more whiteness, but mostly just make it matte, because these two foundations are very shiny. Um, and you just want to pat that on. I'm starting with the little poof that's included with it, because it, it, it goes on really thick. But personally, I think it goes on a bit too thick, so once I've got it on, I will then brush off any excess and kind of set it a bit nicer. As you can see there, where I've like pushed really hard, you can get this stuff to go on really thick and really white. Um, so again, it just depends on the level of whiteness you're going for on your particular look, but I would definitely advise using the powder on this particular method to set it. You can also use this stuff on the other two methods if you feel it's appropriate, but I don't like to do that with paint because I feel like it, it cracks the effect of the smoothness that you were going for if you can actually get it smooth as you can see I can't um, but it does tend to crack the paint up a bit and disturb the surface of it so you need to be very careful if you are going to use powder over your paint okay so I've got it all on and now I'm going to take my big fluffy brush and brush off any excess so you don't get any lines in the powder or any you know patches where it just looks a bit intense like it did when I pushed too hard into the powder <laughs> Um, and you just want to brush that everywhere, it gets rid of any excess powder and it can also help to just get rid of any um, particularly strong lines you've got in the foundation that you put on before so as you can see I'm going quite hard on that just in case there are any blotches that I've missed to blend in. Okay this is quite a good part to put back in because if like me you've noticed you've missed a point I just went over with my egg sponge first with leftover foundation on it to see if that was enough but then I've gone straight into the white um, to try, try and cover that up um, and I think I also popped it in the um, mixed white and foundation because that's why we put the foundation in it so it's a bit thicker to cover any inconsistencies and then I'm just going back over with a brush. So you can fill in any parts that you do realise you've missed. And that is us wrapped for today. That's three different ways to make yourself white as a piece of paper. You can find all of the products used in this tutorial listed in the description box below. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial for a place to hang your cape. Bye!